As volatile as they knew the sea could be, the seven courageous men in this story didn't fear it. Rather, they thrived on the adventure it brought them. Instinctively, they also understood that whenever they left port to earn their living on the fishing dive boat Diane, looking after each other was the priority. But on the 16th of October last year, the unthinkable happened. The sea off the coast of central Queensland revealed its fury. The boat capsized and six of the crew were lost. Only Reuben McDornan was spared. Tonight, for the first time, he speaks about the Diane's final journey, a miraculous escape from an underwater tomb, a one in a million feet of survival, and most importantly of all, his best mates who didn't make it home. Five days after she sank, police divers make their first approach on the fishing vessel Diane. For the first time, we see her lying 30 metres under the surface. OK, I'm going to find the cabin. A resting place, eerily quiet, as all tombs are. There are no bodies in the cabin. She's taken six good men down with her. All victims of the terrible night at sea that almost claimed a seventh crew member, Reuben McDornan. It's bloody tough. It's, you know, I'd, it's not a day goes by that I'm not in that wheelhouse with the boys. Each of those boys inspired me to, to be something better than I am. and. You know, I've been given the opportunity to, to live that, you know, so I'm not going to let them down at all, you know. It's inspired me, it's given me more drive. So you're living for those boys in one sense? Definitely. You know, and I want to do them proud. Tonight, Reuben's extraordinary story of escaping the capsized Diane and then watching the boat sink with his mates still trapped inside. Of how the love of his wife, Sammy, spurred him on through a night he should never have survived. And we meet the people responsible for Reuben's miraculous rescue. That's about as good as the hug he gets yeah. when he off the boat. Yeah. <laughs> this one's from Mum as well. <laughs> Finding Reuben in that water was a real miracle. <laughs> I can't think of any other word for it. Big throw to the duckies. But this is also the story of too many bereaved families and the fight against successive government failures that could have saved the lives of the Diane crew. They had no help. Because they had no help, they had no chance. And because Reuben survived, we now know that there was a window. That's right. Yeah, definitely. Wind in my hair, I feel part of everywhere. Underneath my bin is a road that deserves. To all who went to sea on her, you could never call the Diane a trawler. She was a dive boat. Manned by a super fit young crew steaming up and down the Queensland coast, harvesting sea cucumbers, an Asian delicacy. We're down there looking for sea cucumbers, which is also known as beach demur or trepang. Mm. But yeah, we just call them slugs. Makes it easier to, to explain ourselves at the pub or something. <laughs> but they weren't only fishermen. They were film stars on documentary television because their job was so unique and dangerous, diving up to six times a day to depths of 30 metres. It was my identity, you know, being a slug diver. You know, a lot of my friends tell me that, you know, it's, I found myself when I, when I joined the boat. 
How tight were you with the other boys on that boat? Very tight. We were, we were brothers. The Diane was just here. Yeah. When we took off on that day, the bow pointing up here. We just filled up and loaded up. Ready to go. Yeah. Nine months after the tragedy, Reuben has decided it's time to retrace with Sammy the Diane's last moments. It's a pilgrimage of sorts, starting at Bundaberg Marina, nearly 400 kilometres north of Brisbane, the last place she docked. The Diane left the harbour here at Bundaberg mid-afternoon on the 16th of October last year. The plan was to head slowly home, up the coast, slugging along the way. The conditions were bad, but the boys had all been out in worse, so were pretty relaxed. They knew they were in for a rough night, but had no idea what lay ahead. On board for this run home back to Cairns were six fellow sluggers Reuben considered family. Well, you were known as the male models. You were all fit, <laughs> good-looking, young guys. Well, yeah. I think that was because of one uh, particular diver who, who happens, happened to be a male model at some stage. Yes. <laughs> Eli? Yes. yes, Eli. He was uh, an absolute weapon, ba battle axe of a man, and the most kindest guy to back it up to. Joining Eli Tonks in this band of brothers was Adam Hoffman, who had an encyclopedic knowledge of marine life, and Zach Feeney, the adored baby brother of Joel and Jackie. He was at home, you know, on the water and underneath it. That was his safe place, his happy place. I mean, that, that's just where he's comfortable, um, mm. you know. Chris Samet was not only a diver, but an accomplished filmmaker as well. His short film, Slug Divers, Farmers of the Sea, documented life on the Diane. According to his wife Sharon, filming and diving were Chris's great passions, along with being a husband and new father. What will you tell Chase about his dad as he gets older? Oh, just the legend that he was. Like, you ask anyone about Chris and he's just a, like an absolute legend and he's got all the proof to back it up. Yeah, this is the drop camera we use. The skipper of the Diane, on its doomed final voyage, was the boat's owner, Ben Lay. He was there for his crew. Um, you know, they were his family. He didn't have a missus, didn't have kids, but he was a good-looking rooster, very, you know, top bloke. Uh, he, but that boat was his missus, and the divers were his kids. He was hard but fair, you know. He never held a grudge, but he would never let you slack off. And the most important thing to him was the safety of the diving. And the last of the lot, Adam Bidner. Oh. oh, yeah. He's a warrior, as everyone would put it. Sorry, guys. Yeah, Adam became my best mate, you know. He, he was just... <laughs> And such a bloody special character for the Diane, you know, we all brought our own. But um, he was a special one, that's for sure. It's just before 7.30pm, 16th of October last year, and the Diane is steaming north, far off the coast of 1770, an historic town, the first place Captain Cook made land in Queensland. The weather intensifies and the crew all retire to their bunks except for the skipper Ben who's in the wheelhouse. So there's nothing about the conditions that had you worried? No, not at all. We were getting a few side-on rolls and it, it wasn't like the boat was continuously rolling. It was just a big roll would happen and you know I'd, I would brace myself a little bit but if I felt at any time that I was it was getting hectic, I would have got out of there, you know. And then just one just come out of the blue and it didn't, there wasn't a noise, there wasn't a bang. Well, it just 
did one roll like it was and just continued, continued to roll. And as it got to a certain point of where the boat had rolled, you know, it was, it, it, everybody knew. What's it like to have everything turned upside down like that in very, the dark? Very disorientating. It, it just, yeah, it, it turned extremely quick, you know. I, I jumped out of bed and was on that ladder as it was on its side. And by the time I got through the ladder out the hole to the wheelhouse, the boat was upside down. Coming up, how quickly was it filling with water? It's ridiculously quick. Catastrophe at sea. Did one roll and just continued. But a great escape. I remember taking my last breath. Is just the start of Ruben's fight to survive. And you were in waters known for tiger sharks. That's next on 60 Minutes. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.